got a new topic for the exam question walkthroughs videos so we're going to be looking at alcohols now this is the first one and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first okay so make a start so which pair are structural isomers of each other so basically they need to have the same molecular formula so we'll just quickly work out the molecular formula of these so you can see E and G have the same molecular formula, so they are the structural isomers. Next one, which alcohol can be oxidised by acidified potassium dichromate to form a ketone? Well, it's got to be a secondary alcohol. So we've got to establish what type of alcohols A, B, C and D are. So remember, that's all to do with the number of carbons directly bonded to the OH carbon. I won't do them all, but you can see on this first one here, We've only got one carbon directly bonded to that carbon. So that's a primary alcohol and they are oxidized to aldehydes. So you can see that B is the secondary alcohol. That's going to go to a ketone. So B is the answer. Moving on to the main questions now. So we've got to establish the structure of compound C. Got some really imp important information here. So compound C does not react with acidified potassium dichromate. And so therefore compound C has got to be a tertiary alcohol. So there's the partial structure of compound C. So we need to put an H and an OH on this to turn it into the alcohol. If we put the OH group on here, that's only a primary alcohol. We need it to be tertiary, so the OH group needs to go on here. So you can see that carbon there is bonded to 1, 2, 3 directly. I'll just quickly explain this just for revision. So concentrated H2SO4 and heat is a dehydrating agent. It's going to eliminate water, HOH, from the alcohol and put a double bond between the two carbons where they were. So that's why we would get compound B from the um, dehydration of C. And then the final thing we've got to do is just show the repeat unit for the polymer formed uh, when compound B is polymerized. So we literally just break that double bond into a single bond and we put some end bonds on and stick it in a bracket. The bracket wasn't actually essential here, um, but if you do put the bracket on, you've got to make sure these bonds stick through the bracket. Moving on to the next question. So the first thing we'll do is work out the molecular formula of compound F. So it's got four carbons, 10 hydrogens, two oxygens. Obviously we can um, turn that into a simpler set of whole numbers. So just divide through by two. So the empirical formula is C2H5O. And the next question is another one of these flow chart questions. So starting with compound B, what do we turn it into to then turn it into a diol, a dialcohol? So this needs to be a dihaloalkane. So you could either react it with chlorine or bromine or iodine. So I've gone for chlorine, so obviously I need to put chlorine there and there. Obviously if you've gone for bromine, BrBr Br, and so on with the other halogens. So then how do you go from a, a haloalkane to an alcohol, which is effectively what's happening going from E to F? You need to react it with a source of hydroxide ions. So I'm going to go for sodium hydroxide. Moving on to the next question, why is butyl-2-ol classified as a secondary alcohol? Well, I've highlighted the carbon with the OH group one, and you can see it's bonded directly to two other carbons. Alternatively, you could say bonded to two alkyl groups if you wanted to, but two carbon atoms is fine. Moving on to part B, so the shape around the oxygen atom in the alcohol group in any alcohol is nonlinear. So why is that? Well, the thing to remember about this oxygen atom is it actually has two lone pairs on it. Oxygen's in group six, so it's using two electrons in these two bonds. It's got four left, so two lone pairs. So I'll do the explanation first and then put the angle in last. So in any shapes of molecules question, you need to be talking about the, the number of electron regions around the atom in question. So around this oxygen, you've got one, two, three, four electron regions. Next thing you need to do is quantify the types of electron regions you've got. So you've got two bonding regions or bonding pairs, you could call them, and you've got two lone pairs. And the last thing we need to talk about is the type of repulsion that we get. So the repulsion is not equal around uh, this oxygen because the lone pairs repel more than the bonding pairs. So the start angle for four electron regions is 109.5. And the sort of rule is you take two and a half degrees off for each lone pair. So that's going to take us down 
to 104.5 degrees. Part C, so we've got to come up with the equation for the oxidation of butantool. Butantool is a secondary alcohol, so it's going to be oxidised to a ketone. So there's the equation there. Don't forget about the water that's produced um, as well. I would always go skeletal formula for stuff like this. I just think it's quicker. You, you're showing the, the structure of the product, so there's no problem there. Um, you can go structural formula if you want. You could go displayed, but I think that takes longer, so I would always go that way. Next part of the question is just a little practical skills question. So what we've got in here, we've got butantool and the oxidising agent. Well, alcohols are volatile, they're flammable, so it's not a good idea to have this open beaker with um, volatile flammable substances, especially if there's a naked flame. So a much better way to carry out this um, procedure would be to heat under reflux. But the final question, just a percentage yield calculation. So the first thing I'm going to work out is the moles of butantool that's been reacted um, in this reaction, which is mass over MR, 0.273 moles. So look at the ratio, 1 to 1, so you'd expect to make that many moles of this uh, haloalkane. So what we need to do now is work out how many moles of this was actually formed, so it's going to be the mass over the MR of that. So that comes out at 0.184 moles, and then to turn it into percentage yields, we do the actual moles divided by the expected moles times 100, which comes out at 67.4%.